All right, Med 105, this is Orientation to Lab, Medical Assisting. So chapter 45, I believe, in edition 5 and or 6. So it doesn't matter which book you have. All right, so we'll talk about the medical assistance role in the lab. So there's just two main. It's the office lab and an outside lab. So they call the outside lab a reference lab. So play a little bit with the equipment, a little bit on safety. Uh, but what we want to get into is looking at specimens, collecting and looking at specimens. QA, that's everything you do before the actual lab. QC is everything you do afterwards. So this is training equipment making sure that's all good and then after everything's done you might have to do some extra testing to make sure so the legislation is the CLIA in 1988 and that determines what an office lab can do versus what needs to be sent out to a reference lab so common things will be collecting and testing of course, blood, urine. Mm -hmm. If you do a spinal tap, then that's cerebral spinal fluid. Because whatever's in the spine is the same thing that's happening in the brain. So if they can take it from the spine, they know what's happening in the brain. So what do we use it for? Of course, diagnostic testing. All right, the things that can be done in-house at a physician office lab is usually low and medium complexity tasks. Anything, so some medium things and a lot of high difficulty things, you'll need to send out to a reference lab. So they'll have uh, better equipment, more precise equipment, and um, I think different staff. They'll be able to do more things for you, more difficult things. In the physician office lab, you can do the low ones. So based on uh, CLIA 88, most of the low ones a physician's office can do. However, for medium, the office will need to show that they can do it and be exempt from having the requirements as if they were a reference lab. So common everyday medium difficulty labs, the office can actually do. All right, timely routine processing of tests, definitely. So you'll have your schedule at any office and you'll be familiar with the turnaround times for specific tests. So blood tests, relatively quicker turnaround time. Microbiology takes a little bit longer because we'll need to identify the specific microbe before we can do the treatment. Your analysis, most of that stuff done in-house. All right, compare a reference lab to a physician lab. So pretty much medium to high difficulty must be done at a reference lab. Do it in-house, definitely a lot quicker. But if you have to send things out, it's going to take a little bit longer at a reference lab. All right, taking samples. So, of course, prepare the pa patient. So a lot of times we'll do cultures, simple cotton swab of an area of the body, plate it. Uh, you might have to assist during some minor surgery for specimens. So just prep them, uh, get them dressed, position them, collect the sample. Some samples will need to be fixed and or preserved. So we'll practice a few of them. We'll put it in some formulin, which is a diluted uh, formaldehyde solution. All right, we'll do the tests. Can you report results to the patient? Can you, as an MA? 
No, all right? Routine results, I think sometimes you can, but most of the time you're gonna have to refer them to the physician. You wouldn't want to give any like misleading or wrong information to the patient. Additional, of course, regulation. So that's HIPAA, of course, compliance. So if you're sending samples out, what information can you attach to it? What information needs to be de-identified? Or are you guys using codes for all of your specimens? Waste disposal. So you're going to have different chemical wastes. So you have, what is it, biohazard waste, sharp waste, chemical waste now. So make sure you dispose of your trash in the appropriate stream. Record keeping, so of course, match up the specimen with the patient, especially if you're using codes and numbers to identify or match specimens to patients. Inventory, definitely you'll be ordering your consumables daily. And then if you need any follow-up, make sure you let the patient know. All right, what are the duties of a medical assistant related to testing done? Well, you got to prep the patient, collect the sample, maybe test the sample, fix the sample, send it out, get the results, report the results. So pretty much um, everything from start to finish. Have you used an autoclave? Okay. So in the hand washing class, was that Med 102, septic technique? So we we'll probably won't do too much autoclaving. Pretty straightforward. Uh, centrifuge, probably not going to do too much. We're mostly doing muscroscopy, microscope work in the lab. So probably starting tomorrow, we'll look at some specimens. So if you can, bring in some yogurt. That's always good. Uh, we'll look at some cheek cells, maybe some blood. We'll do wet mounts tomorrow just to get us started. I'll go over the procedure. And then um, time permits, we'll do some dry mounts for microscopy tomorrow. Electronic equipment, mm, not too many. So those are your analysis, your assay machines. Autoclave, no, that's, that's a centrifuge. Autoclave, sterilization with heat. Centrifuge to separate things of different density. Have you done your urinalysis? Yeah, so you're already familiar with this one's the urine one. Uh, blood smear, we'll do, yeah, we'll do this. This is our dry. This is more of a dry technique, dry slide technique. Uh, what I mean by dry and wet is the cover slip. So if you put on a cover slip, that's going to be a wet technique. Right, review of the microscope. So I'll leave the parts to you to recall, but to use it, first thing you want to do is make sure it's on low power and that the stage is all the way down. And when you put it away, make sure it's on the low power and the stage is also all the way down. So you have the eyepiece. This usually magnifies tenfold. And then you have your lenses here. One of them is 4x. I think the other one's 10x. The other one's like 100x. So if I have 10x here and a 4x here, what's my overall magnification? 10 times 4 is 40x. So your low power is 40x. Your medium power is 100. And then your high power is about 1,000. So on your high power, you're going to need oil. Have you used immersion oil? Yeah. Okay. So the reason we use oil is because of the gap. So as light bends through the gap of air, it gets refracted. And when things are so small, you're going to need oil. So it prevents the light from bending too much. And then you can still see your object. So compound just means has an eyepiece in an objective. Try to use two eyes 
our binoc or sorry, our microscopes have two eyes for you, or sorry, two objectives for you to look through. But for most people, it's a lot easier to use it with just one eye. But you can also adjust it for your prescription as well. Here's the oil. So most important thing is you need to go through your progression. So you're going to start off with the low power and your stage all the way down. You're going to move the stage up with your to how you spell course. Yeah, maybe course adjustment knob. So on the knob, it's the bigger one. And then the middle one is the fine adjustment knob. So all you're doing with the course adjustment knob is moving the stage up and down until your specimen is within the depth of field. So once your specimen is within the depth of field, then you'll use your fine adjustment. You're going to then rotate to the medium power. You no longer use the course adjustment. You only use the fine adjustment knob because you're already in the depth of field. And then when you go to high, same thing. You only want to use the fine adjustment knob. If you need oil, just swing this out of the way. Add a drop of oil directly on the cover slip or the specimen, and then swing your eyepiece back. If you move the stage up and down at this point, you're going to be out of focus. And it'll be really hard to try to get it back in focus with oil and at the high power. So we'll practice going from low to medium and then oil on high. So try to get some yogurt. Yogurt has bacillus. So those are rod shaped and they're really small. So if you're able to see little tiny bacteria, bacillus, then you should be able to find the other organisms in this course. How do you know to use oil? On the lens, it'll actually say oil on it. So I'll let you know which one needs oil. Hold the microscope by the arm and then put a hand on the bottom if you're ever moving uh, the microscope. So the focus control, coarse and fine adjustment. And then there's that stage where you attach the slide. Stage is below. We'll go to the image to explain it. But uh, a lot of times, if you have too much light, it just washes out the specimen, especially the cheek cells. So you're going to scrape some cheek cells, smear it on a plate, add a drop of water, and then put on a cover slip. Right. So they're clear. They're pretty much transparent. So if you have too much light shining through, you won't be able to see them. So if you dim the light a little bit, it'll cause shadows to form and you'll be able to see the cells a lot better. All right, so all you're seeing, it just looks like, like eggs, maybe a nucleus that you can see. And they're transparent, so if they overlap, you can't really see them too well. So lower the light for the cheek cells. Cover slip, that's what we'll put on top. So we'll scrape some cheek cells, we'll add a little drop of water, put a cover slip on. So here's that, that drop of water. We'll put a cover slip on top and try to angle it. That way, when you drop it down, it removes all the bubbles. All right, so here is the, uh, the labeling. So handle it by the arm and put a hand under the base if you're ever moving it. So here's the light source. Depending on the type, it might have an on-off switch that includes the dimmer switch. So the condenser is different. The condenser is a diaphragm that you can open and close, kind of like the aperture of a camera. So that helps focus the light. So this is the intensity of the light. This is where it's focused. Stage is where you'll clip in the uh, slide, and you can use the knob to move the slide. So we have just an analog one. In labs, uh, they have like automatic searching ones. So all you gotta do is put the slide on and the microscope will find the specimen for you.
All right, using a microscope, we'll just run through it real quickly. So there are sometimes scratches on the uh, lenses or things on the stage. And don't mistake them for the specimen. They're going to be there. If you change it to medium power, it's still there. Change it to high, it's still there. So we have to use our tissue, our special lens tissue, to wipe off the lenses and the oil. So if we're using immersion oil, just use the tissue to wipe off any excess. All right, went over that stuff. All right, so that's part one. Uh, not too bad. We'll stop it here for now.